everyone, I'm Katrina and today I'm going to be doing a spoiler-free review of Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. This review is long overdue. I want to say a huge thank you to Jay for sending me an advanced copy of Nevernight before it came out last year. Just, I fell off the bandwagon with videos, let alone reviews, last year, so it's, it's a little late just a little bit. Nevernight is the first book in the Nevernight Chronicle which will be a trilogy and let's get on to the review. In Nevernight we follow Mia Corvia and when she was younger she witnessed her father being hanged for treason and she decides to take revenge on the men that were responsible for her father's death. In order to do that she decides to join the Red Church which is pretty much a cult-like school for assassins. Oh yeah, how badass does that sound? And in addition to that, Mia also has the ability to control shadows. If that doesn't sound like your type of book, then I'm not judging. I'm not judging. Nevernight was the best book that I read in 2016, and it has joined the ranks of my favourite books of all time as well. And one of the things that I fell in love with instantly was the writing style, and for two main reasons. First of all is the humour in this. Not only just kind of the banter between characters in the actual story itself, but the narration style as well. The narrator has just so much personality and says some really snarky and humorous things. I absolutely loved it. Right from the beginning as well, the narration just really sets the tone for this book. Let me just read the first line of this, the caveat emptor, just like a warning to the reader. <clears throat> People often shit themselves when they die. Yeah. I read that first line and I couldn't continue on because I was laughing so much. I thought it was just such an interesting and powerful way to start this book and, like I said, really sets the tone for it. In addition, it also, from the get-go, shows you that there is some coarse language in this book. There's also a lot of mature content in terms of, like, pretty graphic sex scenes and bloods. And by that I mean blood and guts, which I found really enjoyable. Another thing I really liked about the writing style was just how descriptive it was. It does use quite a lot of descriptive language, particularly towards the beginning of the book, and it really helped to just paint a really vivid image of the world in my mind, which I always, always loved, especially for a fantasy book. Another thing I want to mention in terms of the writing is that there are footnotes in this, which isn't very common in fiction, and I for one loved the footnotes. I really, really enjoyed them. Not only was it another way that the narrator was able to just be extremely snarky, but it also really helped with the world building as well, particularly kind of a lot of the stuff that goes on in the background. We get tidbits about the politicians and the religion and the gods, as well as some other hilarious and fascinating anecdotes about the cities and other people, and even currency. My love for the footnotes and the writing style as a whole may not be the most popular opinion, I have heard from a lot of people that they kind of struggle to get into the writing style, so if you do find this to be the case when starting this book, I would really urge you to keep going. When the action really picks up, the footnotes do taper off a little bit, so it does maintain a fast pace. Perhaps you could maybe skip over the footnotes if you're not loving them. I don't think they're really imperative to the storyline, but I do think they just help to kind of inform your understanding of the world as a whole. And as for the really descriptive writing, towards the beginning of the book it is very rich and colourful, as we are introduced to this new world, but when we do become a little more acquainted with the world, that descriptive language does ease off a little bit so we can more focus on the characters and the action. Speaking of world building as well, can I just say how amazing these maps are? We get these really gorgeous maps of this is the Republic of Atreia, and we zoom in on the next one to the City of God's Grave itself, and we do have another map at the back of the book which I'm not going to show you because you got to read to find out more about it. For one, I love maps in fantasy books. I love that we get three in here and I just really adore the maps themselves that were just so beautiful to look at. Moving on to the characters, Nevernight is just one of those books where I loved every single character that we meet for whatever reason. Whether this be I love to love them, I love them because of their humour, I love them because they're so fascinating or mysterious, or I love to hate them. They're not necessarily the most likeable of characters, but I really enjoyed seeing them and their role in the story itself. I'm going to mention the narrator again because even though this follows me a story in third person, the narrator just has so much personality and occasionally it'll actually address the reader, so it really does feel like a character within the book and they're telling you the story. I do have some theories about who that might be. There's also Mr. Kindly who is a shadow cat. First of all, I love animal companions in books. More often than not, they're just a source of lightheartedness or at least humour and snark, and this was certainly the case again in Nevernight. He could appropriately be called Mr. Snarky. He was 
hilarious. It was just so funny seeing Mia and him interact. I love the dynamic between the two. Some of the other side characters I was particularly intrigued by were the Shahids of the Red Church. They're the teachers. It's just such a quirky and diverse and really interesting array of characters. Marielle and Adonai were gruesomely fascinating. I really enjoyed seeing some of the female friendships that we get in here, but trick? Trick. He is one of my top three favorite fictional crushes. I adored him. Despite being in the School of Assassins, he was one of the few characters that was still just such a kind person, and he was just so sweet, and I adored him. I just wanted to squish his little cheeks and hug him. <sighs> I'm not gonna say anymore. Read the book, and you will understand. But finally, we have the lovely Mia Corvier as well. I think this is also one of my favourite main characters of all time. She just felt so human and so realistic, and despite her bloodthirst for this group of men that were responsible for her father's death, she isn't completely heartless. She sure has her dark moments, and I was cheering for her through them all, but she also has those moments of real compassion and empathy for other characters, and there was just so many times where I was reading how she was interacting with another character, or coming to certain realizations, or just some of the things that she did, I was like, Mia, and I would just fall in love with her even more. A few of those times I just had to stop to read and just think about how much I adored Mia as a character. She shows a lot of strength in so many ways, not just in the physical sense and the ability to kill a man. One last thing that I'll mention about Nevernight that was brought to my attention after already having read it was when one particular character uses the word savage to describe another character who is Dwayne Mary, and this is a race that has some similarities to Polynesian people. So this word in particular being used was a little insensitive, especially considering the treatment of Indigenous people historically. In saying that as well, I have read the second book, God's Grave, which comes out in September, and I do think that Jay has made an effort to fix this mistake in response to the feedback that he has received. There is a similar scene in God's Grave where the character is kind of chastised for what they say, so I just wanted to mention that as well. If it's something that you have any concern about, then maybe look into it a little more. But I'm sure that it will come as no surprise that I gave Nevernight 5 out of 5 stars. I absolutely adored this book. That is all that I have for this review. I hope you enjoyed it and if you have read Nevernight I would love to hear what you thought about it down in the comment section below. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon with a new video but until then I will talk to you in the comments. Bye!